a news station in New Mexico, New Mexico had a segment with a, quote, local HR expert named Heather, and uh, they were talking about pronouns and how important it is to use pronouns in the workplace. Let's watch some of that. Pronouns in the workplace. Do you know what your coworker prefers? Well, joining me today is Heather Talamante, founder of Tell Us About Yourself, Inc. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Of course. Good to have you back. So sure. first off, let's talk about DEI in the workplace, and that's better known as diversity, equity, and inclusion. How do we go about the discussion of pronouns? So essentially, the employee will reach out and say, hey, this is my preferred pronoun. This is how I would like to be addressed in the workplace, how we go about it is by respecting their request, right? So you wanna make sure when they say, this is what I would like to be referred to, um, we address it and we, we honor that and we, uh, moving forward, use that term, whether it's he, she, they, them, their, mm -hmm. whatever they would like to use. We wanna make sure we honor that request and make them feel comfortable in the workplace. Is it appropriate for someone to ask what someone's preferred pronoun usages are? You probably wouldn't wanna ask, that person would ask you. Okay. So, you know, if you, um, if they haven't fully made the decision on what pronoun they would like to use, let them come around to that decision and then ask. Um, if they haven't asked yet, it's not safe to assume. We don't want to make any assumptions. Right, yeah. so this is going to um, have make people be more patient or have to be patient. You do, you have to be patient. If you are the employee that is asking for a new preferred pronoun or a pronoun that's not necessarily natural for individuals yet, uh, just be patient as they learn to use the new pronoun or to address you by that pronoun. Yes, be, uh, be patient with me. That is very important. You know, if I'm working with you and you have a new pronoun you want to use, uh, that's the only thing I would ask is, is personally, please be patient with me. Um, and in fact, uh, I would have to bid that you be very patient indeed because you'll be waiting forever for me to respect your stupid pronouns. So you're going to have to be very, very patient. You're going to be waiting until you die for me to care or respect your pronouns because I never will, ever. It's not gonna happen. Well, it's, it's, it's what makes them comfortable. You know, it makes them comfortable. This is what we've talked about before. The, the, one of the worst things about this is that, uh, it, it, one of the things that frustrates me so much and sickens me so much is that in spreading this pronoun madness, one of the ways that the left's been able to do it is by exploiting in other people, what are good traits? Like people are, they like, they try to people, most people like to be polite. They, most people want others around them to be comfortable. And these are, and in most situations, that's a positive trait. It's the advantage that I have is that I don't share that positive trait. So I don't care about being polite. And I also really don't care if you're comfortable or not. Like it's, it's just, it's not my, it's, I don't live my life worrying about that. As far as I'm concerned, it, it's up to you to make yourself comfortable. I don't, so how's that my concern? So that's always been my approach. And that's why I've always been less susceptible to this, but other people are, are nicer. And so they, they are, can be easily exploited. You know, we talk so much about how cowardice has led to the proliferation of gender ideology, and cowardice is a big part of it. But I'm also willing to accept that for, you know, a certain number of people who initially went along with the pronoun stuff, wasn't so much cowardice as just they, they just were trying to be nice. And they probably didn't think about it that much. And, but then how quickly do they take advantage of your niceness? Um and turn it into this. Which is why I know it doesn't come naturally to a lot of people, and again, it's, it's probably good if it doesn't come naturally to you, but we, in order to survive in this culture, and also to retain and fight for any semblance of sanity and moral decency, you're gonna, everyone needs to have a little bit of a harder edge. And you gotta get used to saying to people, who tell you that what would make them comfortable, what would make them happy, you have to get used to saying to them, I don't care. That's your problem. No ill will. You know, go off and try to be comfortable and happy. But it's not my concern. All right, a little bit more from this uh, segment with the HR. She's an HR expert. I don't know if she actually works, works in HR. 
This is like, I, I thought the worst thing possible is to work in HR, but th- she's found one level that's even worse. To be, you don't work in HR, you're an, just, you're an HR expert outside of HR. Um, you are the HR for HR. We'll watch a little bit more of this. Also, if as you're learning to address an individual by a pronoun, you can always just use their first name. Mm-hmm. Can't go wrong with their first name, right? So Colton is over there. Right, right. Colton right. will be here soon. So you don't have to use a pronoun at all if you're not you know, familiar with it, if it feels unnatural. What if someone is refusing to use uh, someone's preferred pronouns? And this will happen. I will be very honest. In the workplace, this will happen. We have feelings about the pronoun. We don't agree with it. So we don't know why we have to use it. Uh, so it's important if you don't agree um, to still just use their first name. This isn't something that would rise to the occasion of getting written up if you refuse to use it, but this could rise to the occasion of bullying. That person may be repeatedly asking you, Mm -hmm. this is how I would like to be referred. So it it wouldn't rise to the occasion of getting written up, but it it would be bullying. And then bullying gets written up. So ultimately, you're still going to get written up. I do want to clarify one thing because this is important. She says that she, she allows... Right, she's willing to. She has grace enough to admit that um, uh, there, there will be people who refuse to use the pronouns. If you can believe it, dear God, there are people out there who will refuse to use them, and and because they have feelings, they have feelings about your pronouns, and uh, and they have their own feelings and their own opinions about it, and and they're against it. Well, I want to clarify one thing: is as one of the people who will absolutely refuse to use your pronoun. It's not so much that I have feelings about your pronoun. I actually, I, cause I'm not thinking about your pronouns at all. So I, it's hard. I don't, I, I don't generate any feelings about them because I'm not thinking about them. Okay. Um, I don't have an, it's to say I have an opinion about it. I don't really have an opinion either about it. It's not an opinion. Like if you're a man, then you're a he. That's not an opinion. That's just a fact. As far as feelings, there aren't a lot of feelings about it. I don't go, go around have, thinking about, well, what's their pronoun? Oh, this is how I feel about that. No, I just don't, I just don't care. See, so you are coming to me. You're the one with the feelings. You're the one who cares. And you are coming to me and, and, and asking me to do something. And so it's not up to me to justify myself. It's not up to me to have feelings about it, to explain my, quote, opinion or anything like that. I have lived my whole life calling men he women, she, and, and because that's what you do. And that's just, and that's, that's how I've lived my life. You're coming to me with a request and which is really a demand telling, telling me to change, telling, telling me what you want me to do. So it's up to you to explain why I should. The burden is on you. Give me one good reason. So as always, they're, they, they say they're trying to flip it around where we have to justify ourselves if we want to continue simply living in reality, where men and men are men and women are women, then we have to justify ourselves. But it doesn't work that way. I don't have to justify anything. You have to justify. So if you're a man coming to me saying, oh, I need you to call me, call me a she, why should I do that? Now, I'm, I'm listening. I'm, I'm, sitting, I'm, I'm standing right here in front of me. I'm not, not going to run away screaming. If you have a really great argument... If you have something you could present that would make me abandon everything I know about reality and the rules of grammar, then I'm all ears. Go ahead and tell me. But all you have is, well, it would make me feel better. Well, okay. It wouldn't make me feel better to abandon reality. So, it's, And we're talking about what I'm doing here, not what you're doing. So why would I do that? Hey, I know you're uh, craving some more Matt Wall Show content. Well, I have some great news for you. If you head over to dailywire.com and subscribe now, you can watch or listen to my full show. You can also listen to my podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'll see you there.